Is there a time and a place for exogenous ketones? Those are those ketone supplements that you see on the market all the time. You see them advertised everywhere. Okay, the truth be told is that I'm not the biggest fan of exogenous ketones, and I'll explain why in this video, but I also owe you a service of playing devil's advocate and being totally honest here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down when you might get some benefit out of utilizing exogenous ketones, and also when you absolutely will not. I'm also gonna clear up a lot of the marketing jargon that's out there surrounding exogenous ketones so that you don't fall victim to some of the craziness that's out there. I just wanna lay it all out, give you the data, give you the science, and give you the true facts that are gonna help you whether you're in ketosis or not. You are tuned in to the internet's leading performance and nutrition channel. Topics on keto, on fasting, and everything in between, with new videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Also wanna make sure you head on over to highly.com after you watch this video so that you can check out the premium performance apparel that I'm always decked out in in all my videos. All right, so first off, let's just quickly touch on what an exogenous ketone is, and I'll make this brief. An exogenous ketone is an artificial ketone. Okay, so when you're in ketosis nutritionally, your liver is creating ketones. Exogenous ketones are ketones that are created in a lab. They are fake, they're artificial ketones, okay? And what they do is they bind them to a salt or a salt backbones like magnesium or potassium. Okay, this is why they're called ketone salts. They do this to make them a little bit more stable and to make it so that you can easily ingest them and they potentially even taste a little bit better. But what we have to outline here is that exogenous ketones do not put you in ketosis. Let me say that again. Exogenous ketones do not put you into ketosis, despite what you will see in all the marketing. It's usually a twisting of the words. Okay, there is a huge difference between nutritional ketosis, also known as ketogenesis, where your liver actually creates true, real endogenous ketones, and what is called ketonemia. Ketonemia is just the presence of ketones in the blood. It doesn't necessarily mean that your liver's creating it. So exogenous ketones create ketonemia. They put ketones in your blood, but they don't allow or encourage your liver to produce those ketones. So ketonemia versus ketogenesis. We want ketogenesis. Those of us that are doing a ketogenic diet and trying to get a nutritional ketosis, we want ketogenesis. We want our liver to produce ketones. I could care less if I just have ketones present in the blood if I'm not actually taking the fat and turning it into ketones. So what's gonna happen if you take exogenous ketones is your blood levels are gonna show that you're in ketosis because they're gonna register ketones. So this fools a lot of people because they see that they have excess ketones in their body, meaning they think they're in ketosis, but all it means is you have ketones in your blood. So let's talk about when there actually is a practical application and when there isn't. Okay, let me first off say this again. Artificial ketones or exogenous ketones are not going to get you into ketosis. So they are not for someone that is just trying to necessarily get into ketosis faster. That's not gonna solve the problem. But what they could work for is when you're potentially transitioning into keto for the very first time. You see, the reason that you end up feeling the keto flu is usually twofold. It's usually an electrolyte issue, but it's usually also your cells not being used to using ketones yet. So what ends up happening is because they're not used to using ketones, they're really inefficient at it. So if you were hypothetically to use exogenous ketones at that specific point in time, you could at least alert the cells that they will soon be seeing ketones. So basically, you give it a little bit of a fair warning. You basically tell the cells, hey, here's some ketones, get used to it because you're about to see them. So it could potentially modulate the keto flu a little bit. But again, there's no real evidence to back that up other than just what we've seen in kind of independent studies and just independent uh, experimentation. Okay, then there's the topic of hunger. Hunger is a big one. Now, when it comes down to using exogenous ketones for any reason whatsoever, I would say that hunger is probably the most solid, concrete one. There's data, there's some evidence there, and you don't have to be following a keto diet at all to get the benefit there. So you could be eating carbs and still get the actual anti-hunger benefit of exogenous ketones. So there is a study that was published in the journal Obesity that took a look at 15 individuals, okay, and they gave them either an exogenous ketone drink or an isocaloric dextrose drink, basically a drink that had some carbohydrates in it after a prolonged fast. Okay, so what they found is that the exogenous ketone group had an elevation of blood ketone levels to 3.3 millimoles. That's a good elevation of ketones. They had a good amount of ketones in their blood. And that's about the amount that you would want to see if you were in nutritional ketosis. So it was a good argument there. And then of course the group that had the isocaloric dextrose drink saw a pretty good increase in blood glucose. What they found is that shortly after consuming the ketone drink, 
there is a dramatic decrease in insulin, glucagon-like peptide, and ghrelin. Okay, so those are all hunger hormones. Those are all hormones that will signal us to be hungry and do kind of chaotic things in terms of that signaling process in the body. Of course, the group that consumed the dextrose drink had actually an increase in their hunger hormones. So sure, we definitely can see that there's a very dramatic decrease in your cravings and your hunger when you use exogenous ketones, whether you're following a keto diet or not. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the end all be all. Okay, so let's talk about another thing that people talk about. They talk about exogenous ketones boosting mental performance. There's zero data there. Okay, there's zero scientific evidence. There's nothing that's talking about exogenous ketones boosting mental performance. Okay, the mental performance studies all have to do with nutritional ketosis, ketogenesis. And the reason that exogenous ketones may not actually promote that mental acuity is simply because it's a very, very finely tuned process. The brain needs very specific amounts of ketones, of glucose, or anything to actually function properly. So if you just load your body with a bunch of exogenous ketones, you can't expect them to immediately go to your brain. Okay? That's just not necessarily the case. And again, there's not enough evidence to really make an argument one way or the other. I can just give you my opinion here. Now, when we look at weight loss overall, there are some links with what are called ketone esters. But ketone esters are different from ketone salts. You see, ketone esters are typically used in research modes. So we're starting to see them a little bit on the market now. Basically, they're ketones without being bound to a salt. So they're a little bit more expensive, they're a little bit more fragile, and they taste like garbage. But ketone esters have been shown to sort of promote the migration from white fat to brown fat. Brown fat increases thermogenesis. It's the fat that actually raises your core body temperature, gets thermogenesis up, allows you to burn more fat. However, there's a lot of evidence that shows that nutritional ketosis, ketogenesis, creating those ketones naturally, ends up promoting more of that migration of white fat to brown fat. So if you're looking to get that weight loss benefit, you're better off encouraging your body to create its own ketones from fat because you're going to get, of course, the metabolic effect of burning fat, but you're also going to get the migration of brown fat. So therefore, I would honestly go that route whenever possible. Now that's another thing we have to bring up here is if you're on a keto diet, if you take in exogenous ketones, they presumably go to the front of the line, meaning the body would temporarily slow down the utilization of fats to create ketones, because it's gonna use the exogenous ketones first, preferentially because they're there in the bloodstream. So the liver says, hey, I get to take a break. This could actually slow down your fat loss. That's a big issue that we have to pay attention to. Now playing devil's advocate and looking at the other side of the situation again, there are some studies that show that ketone esters might improve aerobic performance in a small amount. But then when we look at anaerobic performance, we actually see that ketone salts might actually hinder performance. So let me go ahead and reference a study here. There's a study that was published in the journal Applied Physiology, Nutrition, and Metabolism. And it took a look at 10 moderately trained men. So men that were evenly trained, they were used to resistance training, used to performance training. And what they did is they had them consume an exogenous ketone beta-hydroxybutyrate beverage or a placebo beverage. And what they had them do is 30 minutes after consuming a beverage, they had them go ahead and do a spin cycling ergometer test. So they had them do sort of a submaximal and maximal test on a spin bike. Well, they found that the exogenous ketone group did actually oxidize more fat. So that's pretty cool. They actually did utilize more fat as a fuel source at that point in time, but their overall performance decreased by 7%. So that's kind of interesting because normally what we'd look at with exogenous ketones is that it gives your body the ability to use ketones and carbs. So hypothetically speaking, if you were someone that was not on a keto diet and you were trying to prepare for like a hardcore CrossFit workout, in theory, you would be able to take the ketones and still have carbs in your system and be able to use both. So basically the body would be able to use the ketones for the aerobic energy, the cardio, and it would be able to use the glucose for the high powered energy. But what they found is that the exogenous ketones sort of blunted the utilization of the carbohydrate, the glycogen, the glucose, to a certain degree by about 7%. Now, I've talked about this study in other videos. Now, this is marginal. This is not a big, big difference, okay? This isn't huge. But if you're trying to take a given supplement specifically for a performance increase and it decreases performance, that goes against the grain. So you can't market them as a performance supplement. Okay, now I will arguably say that that's not a big difference, 7% in performance, but it is pretty cool that you could add exogenous ketones and potentially get your body to use more fat despite that 7% decrease. I don't know, I guess I'm just playing devil's advocate here. I'm a big proponent of the ketogenic diet, so I love the fact that it promotes more fat utilization. But yeah, if it's going to decrease performance even 1%, even a half percent, it should not be marketed as a performance supplement. That's just my opinion. 
Um, so all in all, there you go. That's how you're going to really want to utilize your exogenous ketones. You, basically, you don't need them as much as you think. You use them sparingly, you use them when you're first getting into keto, and you use them to fight hunger, whether you're in keto or not. That's gonna save you a heck of a lot of money over buying a 50 or $60 bottle of beta-hydroxybutyrate every single month, when quite honestly, you don't really need it. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here in my videos. If you have ideas for future ones, just put them down in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to either reply to your comment or possibly even create a video for it. See you soon.